Dr. Lori, and this is What's It Worth with Dr. Lori, and today I'm here with Penny from... I work for the Lancaster Newspapers. Terrific. Where are you from? Where do you live? Mount Joy. Mount Joy, not too far. Nice yeah. to be with you. Thank and you. And you brought some pieces that relate to a book collection. That's correct. Tell me about your collection. Well, we have quite a collection of books that my husband collected uh, through some travels, and I know nothing about it except that we have a lot that are signed. Uh, by the author and as the illustrator. Okay, so author and illustrator are signing some of these books at the request of your of your husband. Correct. And here's one that's really signed. So the author here is Eve Bunting and the illustrator is David Diaz on this particular book. And then this work of art here, a print, was actually sent to your husband Correct. or to your family. Mm -hmm. And that work of art very surprisingly, is right here in the book, right? So you actually can see the piece here, right? So that was nice. So tell me how this happened. So he wrote to the artist and said, or wrote to the illustrator mm -hmm. and said, will you sign the book? Correct. Right, okay. And in response to that, the illustrator sent the print saying, when you come across a copy of the book, send it to me, I'll be glad to sign it for okay, you. Okay, great. So that, that illustrator signed a lot of the book. Actually, he was pretty overzealous in making Correct. this signature. So he signed, you know, he signed the front pages, and he signed another page, and he signed this page, and then he sent this. So very nice, generous guy, mm -hmm. um, but really did a lot um, to the book. And you do have a signature also of the author. A couple of things about autographs, because we talk about autographs a lot. It's always good if you have an autograph. For example, uh, you meet Marilyn Monroe and she's in a bar. And she signs an autograph for you on a bar napkin. Well, that's worth some money. But then, you know, you get to talking and you become friends and you keep in touch and you leave the bar and three months later you get a note from Marilyn Monroe and she says, oh, you know, it was wonderful to meet you and you really helped me and I got to talk about that terrible divorce I had with Joe DiMaggio and you're just fantastic and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And she signs that letter. That letter's worth more because it connects you to Marilyn Monroe than that napkin, right? Yeah. When it comes to the book, what you're doing now is these, the illustrator is basically trumping the author, okay? The author signs the book and they sign it in one place. The illustrator decides in all of these signatures, and maybe you can find some of those signatures in your book. Sure. Um, but basically, he is signing so much. He's basically signing the front and giving you some more artwork, right? And then you're seeing here where he also did some signing next to this particular We'll have to find it. Where this particular work of art is as well. He also signed and made... Now, this is the author here. This is not the author no, here. just this This, one. of course, is the, this is David Diaz, the illustrator. Correct. But as you go through the book, which is a beautiful book, wonderful. You can see why it won the Caldecott Prize. But basically what you're seeing here is the way in which this particular print, which is the same image for this book... <laughs> keep going. You'll find it, Penny. <laughs> We'll be here into the next segment, but you'll find it. Oh, here there it is. is. You know, you also signed over here. Yes. So you're seeing again a lot of what starts to what starts to actually move on to that line of are we obscuring the book? Okay? So you want it signed, but you don't want it signed throughout the entire piece. However, it's really quite beautiful. Here's some of the things we look for. In a collection, like you and your husband have, you look for many of the same types of pieces. So, children's literature, uh, they have certain criteria, right? So, a dust jacket, a good spine, a contemporary work. Then, on top of it, you also have it signed by the author and it's signed by the illustrator. All of these things help the whole collection increase in value a little bit. Okay. Okay. So what you want to keep doing is you want to keep having every piece that you find have those same criteria. Now you've sort of given yourself a big project because those pieces, while they may be first edition and may have won the Caldecott Award for children's literature, even if you just find that book, now in your collection, if they are not autographed, they aren't worth as much as the others. So what happens is you start to impede the collection. If you start off on this and and more power to you guys because you have had them, of course, um, signed as time has gone on. Now, what you've also done is in this particular case, you have an original piece of children's illustration or illustration art that now accompanies this book. 
you take this work out of the context of your book collection, it's not worth as much. Okay. Okay. It is still a print by a famous artist. David Diaz is known for his artwork in and outside of illustration, okay. right? So this particular work of art has its own value, and then it has a value, then the book has its own value with the autographs, but then you have to add them together. Okay. Okay. So when you think about this, and you think about autographs of famous people, you know, maybe like Robert Kennedy or uh, Muhammad Ali or someone like a sports figure, you also are thinking of the way in which these particular pieces are also now artists or authors. Okay. okay, so there's a lot going on now because you have amassed this great collection. By amassing a great collection, you increase value by between 10 and 25% hmm. for every new piece that comes in. Not only the value of the piece, but now 10% more than that oh. for the whole collection. Okay. So this is when I teach people, make sure that you sell it as a set. If you're going to liquidate it, liquidate it as a collection because there's somebody else out there who doesn't want to do all of the work, leg work, running around, searching, hunting that you've already done. There's a value to that. So the book in this particular case is worth about $350. Okay. With the autograph from Eve Bunting and also David Diaz. Okay. In addition to that, you have this particular piece and you have all the correspondence that you've made. You have this particular piece, which is worth another $500 okay. because while it is not an original work of art, and understand what the differences are when you look at a print versus an original work of art. The artist actually in some of the correspondence called this an original and it's not. It is a print. It is mass produced, produced in larger numbers. However, what you're seeing here in this particular case is of course one that's going, that relates to the book but now is standing out by itself as, as a work of art. Okay. So that's what you're thinking. So about $500 here, about $350 for the book, and you're looking at together about $850, but separated, because this is part of a larger collection, okay. I'm assuming you don't have a million David Diaz prints at home, Not right? Yet. Not yet. <laughs> well, you only have the one, correct? Correct. Okay. Right. Value on this particular piece, again, when you put them together, they're 850, but when you separate them, this piece gets another 10% because it's part of that book collection. Do oh, so okay. you get it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Dust jackets and dust covers and books in general. So you'll notice we've got, you know, a nice bookcase behind us. The bookcase behind us is a good example. First of all, if you have books, you want the books to actually be lying flat. They have put undue stress on the spine if they're up, right? upright like a soldier. We'd rather have a book lying flat with nothing on top. Well, you don't want to have too many books, again, on top of one another this way. But in order not to have the spine damaged, you want to put them, again, laying down. If you have a book jacket, you have to be cognizant of what's happening to the book jacket when you put weight on top of them. Correct. You get it? Yeah. Okay. We have All right. Few, most are on there are laying flat. Most of them are laying flat. Usually with, with book collectors, they're aware of that. Now, I would expect that you have a collection and it is on display in some way. Correct. Correct. Okay. So away from windows, right? Okay. Away from air conditioning, away from vents, okay. away from returns, right? And away from, again, outside walls or exterior walls. You want to make sure that they're in interior walls. Okay. Great. Okay. Great Questions for me? I don't think so. Okay, well, thank it. you so much for being with me. Thank this is you. terrific. A wonderful sure. collection. Keep building that collection. We will. Thank you. We've been telling you also about our What's It Worth with Dr. Lori appraisal table, our Egyptomania style table. If you look at the table, the table is uh, a good example, of course, of 1920s era furniture. And one of the things that you might be able to see here is, of course, the legs. If you look at the leg, you actually can see, of course, the head of the pharaoh and the decorative motif, which would be the breastplate, and then the stylized body, which is just the leg itself. You can see the stylized body all the way down, which is just one particular piece of wood. And then, if you look very closely, we even have feet. Well, all furniture has this. All furniture has what we would call, actually, a leg, a knee, a foot. So even if it's not decorative or it doesn't have toes like this one does, you basically are looking at a table that has, again, that idea of a top and then a leg, which is working and trying to be the motif of the body, and then, of course, the feet. We'll tell you more about the table in future segments, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of What's It Worth with Dr. Lori. We'll see you next time. <laughs>